As researchers and astronomers dive deeper into NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's data, they find strange and exotic objects in the distant and ancient cosmos. Some of these objects have very similar spectral properties, but very different physical characteristics. They named it JWST Eros and Blue Dogs, respectively, and they are found in two different epochs of the universe, the Cosmic Dawn and the Cosmic Noon. What are these objects? How are they connected? And what do they tell us about the nature and history of the universe? These are some of the questions that we will try to answer in this video. So, if you are curious and excited about this topic, make sure to watch till the end. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos like this one. The first type of cosmic twins that we will talk about are the JWS Eros, which stand for JWS Extremely Red Objects. These are objects that are very red in color, meaning that they have a high redshift, which indicates that they are very far away and very old. In fact, they are some of the oldest objects ever detected by James Webb, dating back to the cosmic dawn, which is the period when the first stars and galaxies formed, about 13 billion years ago. But what are these objects exactly? And why are they so red? Well, the answer is that they are powered by active galactic nuclei. These are supermassive black holes that are located at the centers of galaxies, and they emit a lot of radiation as they devour the surrounding matter. This radiation ionizes the hydrogen gas around them, producing a strong emission line of Lyman alpha, which is a signature of hydrogen atoms that have lost their electrons. This emission line is normally in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, but because of the expansion of the universe, it gets stretched and shifted to the infrared part of the spectrum, making the objects appear very red. This is called the cosmological redshift, and it is proportional to the distance and age of the objects. But there is another reason why these objects are so red, and that is because they are very compact, meaning that they have a small angular size, which indicates that they are very dense. This means that they have a lot of mass packed into a small volume, which makes them very hot and bright. However, because they are so far away, their brightness is dimmed by the inverse square law, which states that the intensity of light decreases as the square of the distance from the source. This makes them very hard to detect, even by James Webb. In fact, only a handful of these objects have been discovered so far, and they are among the rarest and most elusive objects in the universe. So, to summarize, JWST Eros are very red, very compact, and very old objects that are powered by active galactic nuclei in the cosmic dawn. They are like the red dwarfs of the early universe except that they are much more massive and active than the red dwarfs that we know today. But how do they compare to their cosmic twins, the blue dogs? Let's find out in the next section. Blue dogs, which stand for blue excess dust obscured galaxies. These are objects that are very blue in color, meaning that they have a lot of star formation, which indicates that they are very active and young. In fact, they are some of the youngest objects ever detected by James Webb, dating back to the cosmic noon, which is the period when the star formation rate peaked about 10 billion years ago. But what are these objects exactly? And why are they so blue? Well, the answer is that they are also powered by active galactic nuclei, just like the JWST Eros. However, unlike the them, which are very compact and dense, the blue dogs are very large and diffuse meaning that they have a lot of space and gas between their stars. This gas is mostly composed of dust, which is made of tiny particles of carbon, silicon, and other elements. This dust absorbs the radiation from the active galactic nuclei and the stars, and re-emits it in the infrared part of the spectrum, making the objects appear very blue. This is called the dust reddening, and it is proportional to the amount and temperature of the dust in the objects. But there is another reason why these objects are so blue, and that is because they have a lot of star formation, which means that they have a lot of young and hot stars that emit a lot of ultraviolet and blue light. These stars are mostly located in the outer regions of the objects, where the dust is less dense and less heated by the active galactic nuclei. This creates a contrast between the blue and red parts of the objects, 
making them look like blue donuts with red holes. This is called the blue excess, and it is proportional to the ratio of star formation to AGN activity in the objects. So, blue dogs are very blue, very large, and very young objects that are powered by active galactic nuclei in the cosmic noon. They are like the blue giants of the late universe, except that they are much more dusty and obscured than the blue giants that we know today. But how do they relate to their cosmic twins, the JWST Eros? Let's find out in the next section. So far, we have seen that JWST Eros and Blue Dogs are two types of objects that have very different physical characteristics, but very similar spectral properties. They are both powered by AGNs, and they both have a strong emission line of Lyman Alpha, which is a signature of hydrogen gas ionized by the active galactic nuclei. They also have similar luminosities, meaning that they have a similar amount of energy output. But how can we explain this similarity? And what does it mean for our understanding of the universe? Well, there are several possible explanations for the similarity between JWST Eros and Blue Dogs, and none of them are conclusive or definitive. One explanation is that they have a common origin, meaning that they are both descendants of the same population of objects that formed in the early universe. These objects could be the first galaxies or the first quasars, which are the most luminous and powerful active galactic nuclei in the universe. These objects could have evolved into different types of objects depending on their environment and history, such as mergers, interactions, feedback, and so on. This could explain why JWST Eros and Blue Dogs have similar spectral properties, but different physical characteristics. Another explanation is that they have a common evolution, meaning that they are both stages of the same process of galaxy and black hole formation and evolution. This process could involve cycles of gas accretion, star formation, active galactic nuclei activity, and gas ejection, which could regulate the growth and feedback of the objects. This could explain why JWST Eros and Blue Dogs have similar spectral properties but different physical characteristics. A third explanation is that they have a common selection effect, meaning that they are both biased samples of the same population of objects that exist in the universe. This population could be very diverse and heterogeneous, but we only see the objects that have certain properties that make them detectable by James Webb or other telescopes. These properties could be related to the orientation, the dust, the distance, the redshift, and so on. This could explain why JWST Eros and Blue Dogs have similar spectral properties, but different physical characteristics. So, to summarize, JWST Eros and Blue Dogs are two types of objects that have very similar spectral properties, but very different physical characteristics. They are both powered by active galactic nuclei, and they both have a strong emission line of Lyman Alpha. However, they have different masses, activities, and frequencies. They are found in two different epochs of the universe, the cosmic dawn and the cosmic noon. The similarity between them suggests a possible evolutionary connection, but the exact mechanism is still unclear. They provide new insights into the nature and diversity of active galactic nuclei, and they challenge the existing models and theories of galaxy and black hole formation and evolution. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. And if you want to learn more about this topic and other topics related to astronomy and cosmology, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.